Hello everybody, welcome to this VDV 2020 Autumn Updates webinar, where we are going to cover uh, our latest improvements uh, since August, September and October. And there are a lot of good and exciting improvements that I want to show you today. Uh, we have been mostly working from home, the whole VDV team. However, we've been still be able to maintaining uh, good performance and we have been releasing uh, up a uh, bit more than 90 updates these past three months. If you have any questions during this uh, session, you can always ask here on the right hand side, uh, or you can send us an email to support at vistadatavision.com after this session. So let's get started. I'm simply going to log in. First off is the big historical data change. So uh, historical data got a big facelift where all of the graphs are now moved to the same graphs as uh, have been in dashboard for quite some time. So you got this nice uh, hover effect. Uh, you can look at any uh, graph that you have created. You can enlarge any graph if you want to take a closer look at the graphs. You can zoom in the same functionality as in the dashboard. You can zoom in into each graph. You can also hide specific parameters on each graph. As on the dashboard, you always have the option to click your download to download the data from that specific graph. And you can also save this graph as a picture to your computer. Uh, as before, you obviously have the, uh, the scale, so you can uh, change the scale at any time. And you also have the date picker as before. So uh, the setup has also changed in the historical data. So if you go to setup and historical data, we will now see a list of all of our sites on the right hand side. <clears throat> One thing to note as in Mr. Data Vision, uh, the data that you're inputting are called sites. If you have multiple uh, data sources coming into one project, it could be good to simply create a new virtual site. So I'm going to do that. Simply going to call it webinar. And now under my webinar, I can create one page, which I'm going to call here simply data page and my scale will be one week. So we have all of the same functionalities as before. We can create multiple pages on each site. Then I simply click here plus to create one new graph. The main difference also between uh, the new historical data and the old one is that you have a live visualization of what you are creating. But the graph creator is exactly the same as in the dashboards. So I can simply come in here and create one graph. If I click apply, I can create simply a new graph by clicking the plus button. The system will automatically fit the two graphs. And uh, I will simply add a couple of other graphs. One battery graph. And on my battery graph, I'm going to remove my auto scale. I'm going to have it here from 10 to 15. Let's go from 8 to 16. I click apply. I create a new graph. It's going to be my Water level sensors, I have them here. I'll add a couple of them. So we can create as many graphs as we want, uh, still up to six as it was before. I'm going to create one more graph. You can use the um, here the filter to filter out my sites.
quickly. So now I have created four graphs. I could go on and create more graphs. A few things I want to show you what we can do with the graphs. Uh, first off, if I'm looking here at my battery graph, maybe rename it to a battery, is that you can here easily display the alarm limits. It is the same as before, but they will now be, dis be displayed as yellow and red lines. Here I'm only displaying my two lower limits. But if you have two upper limits, you would be able to display those as well. One thing to note is that only one variable on the historical graph per graph can display the alarm limits. So if you have multiple variables on the graph, make sure that they have the same limits. A few other things to note with the, uh, with the graph creator. This is here going to be air temperature is that as in the dashboard you don't need to only look at the raw data so if you go to the bottom you can look at the summary and for example you can do average and you can do daily averages so instead of plotting your raw data you're plotting average per day you can also change it to summary max min and so on Uh, other thing that is also quite nice is that uh, in the graph you can here come in and open up any of these sensors is that you have this option called fill variable. So I'm looking at water level sensor 3 which is the red line on my graph and I want to do a fill down to my water level sensor 2. So the system automatically creates a fill between those two lines. So if I open up my water level 2, I can do there a fill to number 4. So you can do fill just to give your graphs a little bit more uh, pop-up. So as soon as we have created this, we can obviously come in down here to our web and our historical data and take a look at our graphs. <clears throat> there are a few other things that got a facelift with the, hist with the historical data update, but under the three dotted button up top you can find a couple of uh, anal other visualization tools uh, items I want to take a look at is specifically the overlay graph the overlay graph is a graph where you are looking at specific sensors so you can choose from all of the sensors that are on this page so you look at the air temperature and what it will do if you look at one week it will take each day and plot it on top of each other. However, if we change the scale to one year, for example, the system will actually grab one line will be one month. You can see the X scale going from first to 31st of each month. So I can here compare uh, months. So how did September 2020 in air temperature stack against October or November last year. So you can do a huge comparison uh, of historical data. Also to note is that the Windroses, both filter distribution and Windrows have all been updated uh, to a JavaScript mode. So a big change for historical data uh, it also makes it much easier to view the historical data on tablets and smartphones. All right, next item is the big improvement of the uh, update overview. Uh, I'm going to take a look at here a little bit different system, so I'm going to switch my screens. So the update overview, you still have the same overview as before. All of the sites that are, have a green background color are sites that you have configured for data update. But data update is, uh, you will get a text message or an email if data is not being inputted for a specific site for uh, a specific time period that you have selected. So for example, if you set, I want to get alarm if no data is inputted for three hours, 
the system will send you alarm if no data is imported for three hours. Uh, green means it has been configured and we don't have any alarm. Uh, red means that we do have alarm and white we don't have anything configured. Uh, but the big change is this uptime here in presented. So we have here selected a week and this is going to tell us the percentage of uptime for this for the last week. Uh, so 91% here uptime, meaning that as soon as we get a data update alarm, the system will count uh, the, the minutes and hours the station was offline and then calculate the percentage of uptime. The, the cool thing is that you can change it to a table view as well, where you can look at each individual day and see the uptime status of each station per day. You have the option to go to 30 days where you actually see 30 days of uptime and you can see if one station uh, or more stations are behaving uh, badly or you're always getting data update alarms uh, or specific days where you might actually have some issues with your whole system. If it's 100% red, just, oh, sorry, 0%, it means that we don't have any data for that uh, day. The beauty is we can also go even for a year where it will be summarized into months. So you can see easily which stations are performing uh, badly where you might need to look at communication uh, or if you if to adjust your data update limit. Next big item is the option to add virtual variable inside another virtual variable. This has been requested for quite some time. So if we go to virtual variable here, we see one virtual variable, simply a tilt meter. So uh, it is an in inches. We might want to either create a new virtual variable to change unit or simply to actually break up the uh, equation. If it's a big equation to separate into few smaller ones. Uh, so we, in the past, we could simply duplicate it uh, and make the change. However, what we can do now is mm -hmm. it belongs to here, this side, and the it is in millimeters. So when we look at it, if we locate our specific site, this is actually a virtual variable. So I can now select a virtual variable to be placed inside my virtual variable. So if I wanted just to change this from inches to millimeters, I can here click save. If I filter out my virtual variable, I have two equations. One is my raw equation where I'm calculating my uh, tilt other one is doing a conversion so it's also easy now i just need to modify my raw equation and then my equation into millimeters will be converted as well or updated so i don't need to ma maintain it on two different places so that is a big improvement and has been requested for quite some time and we are really happy that this uh, has been uh, Add it to Vista Data Vision. All right, item number three, intent, sorry, item number four, intensity plots on dashboards. So intensity plots have been in Vista Data Vision for many, many, many years. They were always just available under the historical data uh, function, but the historical plot is allowing you to look at one sensor where you have a color to highlight like in 3D. So you have your time axis, you have your value axis, and you have color to indicate the values. Sorry, the Y axis would be the time. So on the Y axis, you have time of the day. On the X axis, you have uh, different days. And then you have colors to indicate the value of your sensor. So this can be used for any sensor. 
and it is very very simple to create i'm first off going to show you that now we are looking at two months if i change this here to one year my intensity plot is updated i'm plotting here uh, water level sensor so i can easily see here i have a couple of red uh, zones where i would have higher water pressure i'm also seeing here i'm missing data uh, in january and end of december so you can look at one year or just a massive amount of data and see if there are any trend in the data uh, or what's going on and how to create it it is very very simple you can obviously have multiple intensity plots per uh, dashboard i'll just double click on the header to make it a little bit bigger simply from the type you have intensity plot and you select one of your parameters and your intensity plot is created on the fly nothing else needed the the color scale is over from red to blue and it's taking the largest and the lowest value and doing a uh, using that scale so if we now would take a look at the dashboard we just have here a new intensity plot below very uh, just gives a lot of uh, depth of the data and, and just understanding the data uh, using the colors uh, other thing i want to point out as we're looking at the dashboard are the scatter plot the scatter plot was uh, added to the dashboard quite uh, some time ago but with the scatter plot you can add one or more scatter plots uh, into each graph so here we have two scatter plots on one graph and the scatter plots obviously is connected to the scale so if we would look at longer time period our scatter plot will be updated with more data scatter plot just take a look at it it is very simple to do However, what I wanted to show you is that in the reports, here we have a report, a test report for this uh, webinar, is that under components, now you have the scatter plot. Uh, you can either create a new scatter plot, but the, the uh, option that you have also is simply to select a scatter plot that you have already created on a dashboard so this is now automatically grabbing the scatter plot that you have already created and publishing that into your uh, report so very nice you don't need to recreate it in the reports uh, item number six is the new graph selector in the reports so if we add a graph uh, on into our report we can now simply choose where which graph we want to add to our report we can create a new one but we can also choose here dashboard historical or reports so if you go to the dashboard it will simply give us a list of all of our dashboards so i could open up this specific dashboard and then it will show me here highlight of each graph that i have in that dashboard so it makes it much easier to locate and find the correct graph that you want to do if you make changes in the graphs in the dashboard it will be automatically updated in the reports so we can also come in here we go back we take a look at for example the historical we can open up our webinar we can go to our our uh, webinar page that we did create and let's say we want to add here the battery as well you can see the battery is added the scale is the same as we did here uh, just minutes ago uh, we have also the alarm limits and so on so it just makes it a lot easier to find the graphs that you want to add to your reports 
All right, let's continue. We are making a, a good progress here. Uh, item number seven, it is the bulk alarms. So bulk alarm is the option where you can create an alarm where you can have more than two upper and two lower limits. So you can have either one upper limit, you can have three upper limits, three lower limits. You can fully customize what limit uh, you wish to have. So here we just have three uh, upper limits. We could also add more lower limits if we wanted to. The bulk alarm also recently just went, maybe want to point that out, is that you can activate the, the time option. So you can actually have a, an alarm limit and just say that they are valid during specific hour of the day and maybe just on work days and then you can have different alarm limits for weekends or the evenings and the nights However, what has been added now is that you can now display the colors of the bulk alarm. So if I click your alarm type, so I have three uh, types of warning. I have like noticed, which is yellow, warning is uh, pink, and alert, which is red. So if you add a sensor on, onto a real-time display that has a bulk alarm, now these colors will be displayed as a background in the real-time display. So for example here, if we look at uh, this one here on the left-hand side called Station Bulk, simply just as a demonstration, we have here sensor 1, 2 and 3, and they are all triggering different limits in the bulk alarm. So one is yellow, one is pink and one is uh, red. So obviously if you had four or five limits or different colors, the colors will be the same as your alarm types. So just linking the bulk alarms into the real-time display. Uh, also with the bulk alarms, what you can do now is if we go to the historical data, we open up our webinar page, we create a new graph here is that the bulk alarm limit can also be added now to the historical data. So I have here one sensor and if I open it, if I activate the alarm limits, I might want to change the scale here from 80 to 200 is that you can see my blue line is my limit is my value and I have red uh, pink and yellow as my alarm limits so if you update the bulk alarm the graph or the limit on the graph will also be updated on the fly so just linking the bulk alarm spatter into the real-time display along with the historical data item number eight would be to add burst data onto a GIS map. So just a quick intro on the burst data. The burst data is used to display uh, high speed event based data from specific uh, instruments. So what you can do now in the GIS Sorry, I was not going to look at this one. Take a look at this GIS map instead. Is that if you go to the markers, if you create a new marker, you obviously had the option to do a, a graph, a, a connect to a, a dashboard displacement graph, real-time display and webcam. But now you have the option to connect it to a burst data. So if I do that, I first select a project and then I can choose which unit. And you can choose if you want to look at the time series when you click on the marker events or the frequency overview. You can then here choose your icon and simply place your marker. 
if we add one more and let's choose the events here select the icon that we wish to display so if we take a look at our GIS map here quickly now we have these two markers if we click on this one it will open up the the background data of our instrument we can also change two events and the frequency overview if we want to but the default will be the background data here we did choose to display the events when we click on the marker so it will take us directly to the event uh, page but again we can change to time series and frequency overview you have the same functionality as before you can look at each event you can download it you can flag it you can add comments and so on so just linking the burst data batter into the gis map but obviously as before you can link it to uh, dashboard real-time displays displacement graphs and so on all right item number nine which is the last item that we are going to cover is a new dashboard feature called cumulative sum graph so i'm going to grab my rain sensor but this is a extremely useful tool sorry did not select the right one to look at how data over time is like cumulative uh, uh, calculated so to compare your cumulative uh, rainfall or to accumulate your uh, uh, sorry <laughs> to, to calculate your cumulative rainfall for example so here I'm looking at 2019 which is the blue line and I'm doing the red line which is to oh, sorry this year so the graph is always going from January to December and it is just calculating the cumulative in this case precipitation for uh, each year so I can see this year we have much lower rainfall than the year before so what is also very interesting is that you can add more years so if you have longer uh, or more data in the database you can look at the last up to last five years so we can see how current year is stacking against historical data so we can see rainfall for 2020 is similar to 2016 uh, other things to note is that you can here activate the values so you can see the total value of each year so 38 inches here for 2016 and 17 58 for 2018 and so on but you can also activate here the percentage so it will show you the change in percentage compared to last year's data so just giving you a lot of uh, information in a single uh, graph so this was just released here a couple of days ago uh, and is very very powerful so let's summarize we have now covered nine big uh, improvements which we have rolled out uh, last three months a lot of it is feedback from you guys which we really appreciate so continue to send us your feedback uh, we will be uh, rolling out a lot of interesting things in the upcoming months which we will cover in a similar session at the end of the year or beginning of next year in the meantime follow us on linkedin facebook youtube just to be uh, up to date of what we are doing as we are releasing shorter videos uh, and information there uh, also i want to point out that we do have uh, or do a lot of uh, custom training session for our users uh, simply using uh, online sessions 
where we are covering either part of the system or the whole system. We might be looking at what you guys are doing already today and see what we, uh, if there are any improvements that can be made. So you can send us an email to support at vistadatavision.com if you and your team would like to schedule something like that. It either can be just a one hour session or it can be uh, maybe a series of one hour session where we are going into more depth of the system. So uh, until next time, take care and stay safe.